In this video, we're going to practice implicit partial differentiation. We're going to be looking at multivariable implicit functions. So an example of what that would look like, it's um, an equation where x, y, and z are all wrapped up together. Typically, you have all your terms on the left side and then uh, zero on the right side. But you can see that we've got this big equation somehow relating x, y, and z. So I think there are two important things to understand about the context when we're talking about multivariable implicit functions. First thing is that we consider z to depend on x and y. So even though we don't have an equation like z equals something or other, um, it's still possible to understand that z is somehow a function of x and y. In fact, it's an implicit function of x and y. And then the variables x and y are independent. So that means y does not depend on x, x does not depend on y, but z depends on both of those variables. So that's going to be important when we're thinking about our partial derivatives. So let's do a quick warm up on how um, calculating partial derivatives is going to work in this context. Typically, we would be taking partial derivatives either with respect to x or with respect to y. So we'll calculate, um, we'll do some warm ups of both situations. So let's say we wanted the partial derivative with respect to x of x squared. That would work just like normal differentiation, and you'd say 2x. If you wanted the partial with respect to x of, say, y squared, that would equal 0 because y does not depend on x, um, so you just get zero there. And then if you wanted the partial derivative with respect to x of something like z squared, well now the chain rule is going to come into play. So we would take the derivative of the z squared to get 2z, and then we'd say but z still depends on x, so we need to multiply by uh, delta z by delta x, so the partial derivative of z with respect to x. So that's how the chain rule is going to work in this context. Um, and we'll make sure that we're comfortable taking partial derivatives with respect to y as well. So we're going to run through the same scenarios. Partial derivative of x squared with respect to y is going to be 0 because x does not depend on y. Partial derivative with respect to y of y squared, that will look just like a normal derivative. We'd say 2y. And then partial derivative with respect to y of z squared, well, now the chain rule is going to come into play. So we'd say it's 2z times the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So now we're ready to try an example of implicit partial differentiation. So we're given an implicit multivariable function here. We've got our x, y, and z all wrapped up together in this equation, and what we want to do is find the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So the plan is that we're going to take partial derivative with respect to y of each term as we move across this equation. Okay, so partial derivative of x squared with respect to y, that's going to be 0 because x does not depend on y. Partial derivative of y squared is going to be 2y. Partial derivative of z squared, well, as soon as we hit a z term, we know there's going to be a chain rule coming into play. So we're going to say 2z times partial derivative of z with respect to y. Then we move over to this term here. Okay, this term we're going to have to be a little careful. There is going to be a product rule coming into play. The way that we know there's a product rule is that there's both a y and a z. Um, factor in there. So if we wanted to make this even more clear, we could say that's y times 6xz cubed. That would be another way to rewrite it. And that way we can see, okay, there's a factor involving y and then there's a factor involving z. So let's work on our product rule here. So we'll go y times uh, the derivative of the second factor. This is actually the partial derivative with respect to y that we're taking. So that's going to be 18 xz squared, and then because we differentiated a z term, we need to multiply it by partial of z with respect to y. Then we're going to go plus and do this the other way around. So we'll take our second factor times the derivative of our first factor. 
Well, partial derivative of y with respect to y is just going to be 1. So we're just going to have a plus 6xz cubed on there. That's our product rule done. Um, and then continuing with these last two terms here, partial derivative of minus 2x with respect to y is going to be 0. And then partial derivative of y with respect to y will be 1. And then on the right side, partial derivative of 0 with respect to y is going to be 0. Great, um, so now the finishing stages here, they might feel familiar to you if you really remember implicit uh, differentiation from your first calculus course. The idea is that we want, to cal we want to collect together all the terms that have the uh, delta z by delta y over on the left side, and we want to move all the other terms over to the right side. And as we do this, we can also just clean up any algebra, do any simplification we want to do. So we'd have 2z, times delta z delta y plus we'd have an 18 x y z squared times delta z by delta y uh, those are our only two delta z by delta y terms and then the other three terms are going to move over to the right side so we'd have a minus 2y we'd have a minus 6x z cubed and we'd have a minus 1 Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually factor out the delta z by delta y on the left side. That's going to leave us with 2z plus 18xyz squared. Keep the right side the same. You can rearrange the terms however you want. So minus 1, minus 2y, minus 6xz cubed. And then as our final step, final step we can divide through by what we've got in the square brackets there. Um, if all the terms on the right side are negative, I'd be quite tempted just to factor out that negative. Go minus 1 plus 2y plus 6xz cubed, and then that's all over everything from the square brackets, the 2z plus the 18xyz squared. And if you wanted to do some factoring in the denominator, you could. I'd say that's optional. So that's how implicit partial differentiation works. Um, if the problem had instead asked for delta z by delta x, then the only difference is we would have gone through and taken our partial derivatives with respect to x um, across each of the terms. So that's it for implicit partial differentiation. Thanks for watching.